G'day GDL people, Bruce here, Barking Dog Bim. Now in the last episode we talked about scheduling and there's a few more things I'd like to mention just to round out our understanding of how we can get scheduling to work for us. We had this schedule that we created in the last episode and in it we had this parameter that would concatenate the number of holes. And for the eagle eye amongst you, you would have noticed that they all say three by four. This one doesn't because I've already reset it. Same with this one. But even if they've got clearly not three by four, they still say three by four. Why is that? This goes back to previous tutorial episode three in the order of the script execution. The parameter script won't run unless you either change a parameter on the object or you open the settings dialog. If I open my object here, open object, the default value of my number of holes is three by four. So even though it's populated on my schedule, it's only populated with the default value. It hasn't populated with the true value in the object. And it's pretty easy to reset that. What we'll do is we'll just open all of these in 3D, select them all, open the settings dialog, click OK. And that has run the parameter script for all of those objects. Now, when we go back to our schedule, it will update. And now it has the true value for the number of holes. So that's an important thing to realize that you need to do. If you are adding parameters after you have already placed an object, that parameter script will need to run. There is another way to run the parameter script. And that is under the library developer menu, which you need to add in your work environment. So if we go options, work environment, menus, you have a library developer menu here that you can add to your work environment. And under that library developer menu, you have an option to run parameter script on all placed library parts. Be very careful doing this because it can take a long time to run all the parameter scripts. I'll just copy a couple more of these just to demonstrate something else. So if we notice the gross area is eight square meters, but the net area is 1.2. That doesn't seem quite right when we've got one here that's two square meters and 1.69 for the net area. And what we discover is that that is a result of the merge options that have been activated for this field. So if we have a look at the options here, it will show any value, but it will sum the values. So what we're seeing in here is a sum of the four items that have been placed. If I go list the values, separator with a comma, there we go. It lists the unique values, and because they're all the same, the unique value is a two square meter per item with a net area of 1.2. So I could change that back to sum and do the same for this. And that's more in line with what we would expect. So that's something to appreciate there. So that gives you a little bit of an understanding of what that merge does. To better demonstrate that, I've created another copy of this schedule and I've reduced some of the fields that we display in it. And so what we have here, we just have the hole type, number of holes, total holes, gross area, and net area. And so what we've got here, hole type, uniform values only. So we're showing the uniform values, number of holes, any value, and the list of values, total holes. We are summing the values. So of the seven items that are there, we have 84 holes. Gross area, again, we are summing the values. We're showing any values. So we've got a total of 13.02 square meters of area. Net area, we're showing any value and we're showing a list of values. We're not summing them. So if we were to change this to sum, we have 7.67 square meters of area, total quantity of seven. So if we have a look at this gross area here, Let's change it from sum of values to list of values. And we'll have a separator of a comma. We'll go OK. Now what's happened is we have 
four values here spread out amongst seven items that are merged because they have the same hole type and the same number of holes. Let's have a look at this. Instead of summing, we will say any value, list of values. So it's merging based on which floor it's on and which hole type it is. So all of the rectangular hole types are listed under here, all of the circular under here, and all of the diamond under here, and the same for the first floor. So these are all the different number of hole types we've got. And what we can do as well is we can append the quantity in parentheses. We have two that has a gross area of two square meters, one of 1.29 and so on. So playing around with those different settings for your merge fields will allow you to manipulate your schedule and format your schedule to get the desired output that you need for your deliverables. So it's handy depending on what you need to output. This in particular would be good for things like door schedules where you have the same door type but multiple door IDs. You, you want it to schedule under the same door type but you want each ID to be listed individually. Be great for that sort of thing. Now the merge only works on data fields. It doesn't work on preview fields. So if I click in the header here, I don't get that merge option. I only get it on the data fields. In the last episode, I showed you how to restructure your schedule using this button here on your pet palette, restructure table. Unfortunately, once you do that, you can't unrestructure your table. You have to delete it and place a new one to get it back to being normal structure. Also, I just want to point out a little bit more in more detail that if I split it amongst layouts, when it goes to a multi-page layout, you get this sort of multi-page graphic here indicating that this particular layout is made up of multiple pages. You also get this icon in your navigator as opposed to that sort of icon. So you can see the difference there. The one that looks like it has pages stacked one above the other is a multi-page layout. And when I bring it back to just the one page, this will disappear, like so. And this has gone back to a standard icon. So there's one more thing I'd like to show you, is you can test to see if something is being previewed in a schedule and change what you're displaying to suit. Sometimes in a schedule you want to show maybe an exploded view or you want to show a front-on axonometric view, something that helps display the assembly a bit better, particularly joinery is something that you would do that with. So let me demonstrate what I mean. So in the 3D, we'll open the 3D script window. The command we're after is global context. That's a global variable. And it will test to see what context this object is appearing in. Under your help, you'll find it under miscellaneous, global variables, and deprecated global variables. Global context will work in the 2D and the 3D script, won't work in the others. Anyway, global context, we can test to see whether it's in the floor plan, the 3D view, section elevation. What we're after is six, which is a list. That's a schedule. So under here, we'll go, if global context equals six, now I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. If I was doing this for a live script, I would be putting in a constant in the master script that equals six. So I can use that constant in place here. It just makes it easier to read. That's all. If global context equals six, then what we'll do is we'll go cut plane 25 degrees. If you want to know what cut planes are, check out the video up there and I'll link it in the description as well. Cut plane 25, then we'll draw our prism and we want to cancel that cut plane. So again, if global context equals six, then cut end. G'day, future Bruce here, interrupting this broadcast to stop past Bruce from giving you some dodgy advice. Gotta watch this guy, he's a shocker. You can tell that's future Bruce because I'm wearing different glasses. Now, he's telling you to use a deprecated variable. Now, it will work, he'll show you that it'll work, but it's not good practice to be using a deprecated variable because deprecated means obsolete. Phased out. I don't know why he told you that. What you should be using, and it even tells you in the help, 
been deprecated since ARCHICAD 19. Instead of this, use the global variables global view type combined with global preview mode. And you can find them under miscellaneous global variables general library part parameters and scroll down about halfway. Here they are. Or in the PDF version, they are under miscellaneous global variables general environment information global view type and global preview mode so you're after nine calculation in global view type that's a schedule or two listing that's in global preview mode either of those will work Whew, that was a close one anyway back to you past bruce let's save that have a look in my schedule and here we go, our 3D preview has been updated to show these objects cut by a cut plane. But to show that this only is happening in the schedule, if I open my 3D, they're all appearing as they should. So when it recognises that it is within the context of a schedule, you can then script how you want it to appear. So another example along those lines, if I go to my 2D script, I'll just reorganise this a bit so that we can get it to do what we want all right so i've got my header script here finishing it with the end we'll set my pen and my fill this is in 2d if the global context is six so if it's a list then i'll go to my draw schedule subroutine here otherwise it will go to the draw prism as if it's in a floor plan and i've added my return at the end of my subroutine and just in case you're wondering why I'm mixing capitals and lowercase, I started this script in 26 when I did all my commands in capitals. Since the 27 update to the editor, it now is easier to read when everything's in lowercase because it formats it for you. So when it goes to the draw schedule, we will use the project two command with six, two, seven, and three. What does that mean? Well, project two is under 2D shapes, 3D projections in 2D. Project 2 is a code, angle, and method. I've explained this previously. Once again, I'll link in the description. But the code, projection code, we're going to go for a frontal axonometry. Angle 270 is if you're sitting at a drafting table. And method will be 2, which is hidden lines. So that's what that will do. So I'll save that. Look at my ground plan. No change. Everything's displaying as it should. If I go back to my schedule, change my scheme settings to have a 2D plan preview. So even though I've put in here the 2D plan preview, it's projecting a 3D view because that's what I've told it to do. It's also doing the cut plane. We can get rid of that out of our 3D script, make it display normal. There. And if we wanted to change that to, I don't know, let's try something else. Let's try eight monometric axonometry. What does that look like? In our 2D script, we'll come down here. We'll change our projection code to eight. Save it. Regenerate. And there we go. So that's how you can alter your script to detect that it's appearing in a schedule and update your view to suit. You don't even have to do a projection. You could swap it out for an entirely different drawing if you wanted. So that wraps this one up. Now you know even more about schedules. Future Bruce here again reminding you that even though global context is available for you to use, it's not good practice to use a deprecated variable. Use the non-deprecated variable global view type, 9, for a schedule, or global preview mode, 2, for a schedule. Go and script something. I'll see you in the next one.